After 10 weeks of the MLS season, there's still one club that has yet to put up their first win on the board. With 10 games played, three draws and seven losses, Sporting Kansas City sit rock bottom of the league with only three points. With this, the club's hardcore supporters are turning against each other. Their captain is left speechless after matches, and the manager who just penned a new five-year deal is under fire. That's why, in my opinion, it's time to consider sacking head coach Peter Vermees. It's no secret that Sporting Kansas City is going through it at the moment. And although Cavincio's SKC watch-alongs are straight comedy, it's getting to the point where I'm starting to seriously worry not just for his health, but the whole club. How the f*** do we look this bad? How the f*** do we look this bad? Always! How are players this f awful? Professional players! You get millions of dollars, you don't f Score a goal! I think in any other league and with any other head coach setup, a 10 game winless run to start off the season would have most front offices looking at different avenues for their head coach position. But this situation with Peter Vermees in Sporting Kansas City is a lot deeper than what you may see on the surface. And to figure that out, we have to go all the way back to 2006 when Kansas City Wizards hired Peter Vermees as their technical director, tasked with overseeing the club as they transitioned into new ownership after Lamar Hunt sold the team. After a few years at the club in the 09 season, the Wizards sacked the current head coach, Kurt Anolfo, and named general manager Peter Vermees as the interim head coach. And after the conclusion of that 09 season, they gave him that full-time position. This is where things become a bit different than your typical head coach setup. Vermees was not only the general manager of the club, conducting player scouting, signings, and other front office tasks, but he was also the guy leading the club from the on-the-field point of view. Throughout the late 2000s and early 2010s, Peter Vermees helped push this club forward, being a part of the front office that saw the Wizards become Sporting Kansas City and the move into their own soccer-specific stadium at Children's Mercy Park. This was essential to SKC becoming the club they are today. With Vermees' help, SKC became a foundation of the league and started to grow exponentially both on and off the field. Between 2005 and 2009, SKC averaged just above a 10,000 attendance number. But after that 09 season, those numbers exploded in part of the changes being brought forward on the business side of the club. In 2010, Kansas City's average attendance rose by over 7,000 and since then has stayed consistent around the 19,000 mark. It was great off the field for Vermees and on the field too because he was putting in some of the most successful seasons that SKC had ever experienced. He became the first ever head coach to win MLS Cup as a player and a coach when he led SKC to MLS Cup in 2013, as well as putting together US Open Cup championships in 2012, 2015, and 2017. The blood runs deep with Peter Vermees and SKC as he's been their head coach for more than half of the games in their entire history. With the 183 regular season victories, the fourth winning as head coach in MLS, the pedigree Peter Vermees carries is high. And that's why the topic of firing him is such a big decision. You're not just firing a head coach, you're firing someone who has been integral to the growth of the club since before they were known as SKC. Along with that, how do you manage firing a head coach who's also your club's sporting director? Do you fire him from both roles or do you let him stay on at one? It's very clear that before the season, SKC's front office had wholehearted faith in Vermees. After a very disappointing season in 2022, missing out on the playoffs, Vermees was granted a controversial five-year contract, which ends in 2028. Obviously, the front office had Vermees' back to get them into the playoffs again and anointed that failure of 2022 to the many injuries the club suffered and not to the head coach but it's been kind of a slow decline for a bit now. Peter Vermees has missed out on the playoffs in two of the last four years, and since the end of 2021, SKC holds a record of 12 wins, 12 draws, and 27 losses. And this brings us to 2023, where 10 games into the year, SKC have as many points as they do red cards. Now, they are experiencing injury issues still as key players Polito and Gattikin to find their feet after extended times off, and another season-ending injury to their starting center back before the season even started, but the product on the field is not one worth watching. Along with that, they're losing to other teams that are also really struggling. Colorado's only win so far this year came from their match in Kansas City and four of their nine points in 2023 are from their two matches against SKC. They also drew the LA Galaxy, another club who only sits three points above them in the table. 
And to finally cap it off in match week 10, SKC played a Montreal team at home, a club that's regarded as one of the biggest disappointments so far in 23, and they lost 2-0. And it was during this match that we got a peek into the turmoil that's occurring at SKC. I don't know how you fix it. Um, I'm going to be completely honest. We just don't look anything like the team that we were. I don't know. I, I, I genuinely don't know how to fix it. Speechless. Club captain Johnny Russell is speechless at what's going on within that locker room. At halftime during the SKC Montreal match, the television broadcast clearly picked up Vermees out chants coming from the cauldron, which is SKC's supporter section. According to some accounts, this is the first time people have heard somewhat organized chanting around this subject from the cauldron. Later on into the match too, parts of the cauldron were back at it again, voicing their thoughts, but this time to a chant referencing that their run of form was all Peter Vermees's fault. This is what's been dividing the supporters. Do you actively root for change in the club or do you stay faithful to what's worked in the past? In this video and reports from supporters on Twitter, you can see a clash between the people who support Vermees out and those who support Vermees to continue his role. It's reported that security had to get involved with this small dispute and we're yet to see where this whole thing is gonna go. After the game, the chants echoing around Children's Mercy Park were brought to the attention of Peter Vermees, in which he responded that he hadn't heard them. The crowd was chanting Vermees out at one point after the second goal. Did you hear that, and how do you respond to that? I, I didn't. Um, I, I don't necessarily listen to much goes on. Um, how do I respond? That's that's not it's not for me to make that decision. It's unfortunate, but is what it is. But I mean, come on, there's no way he didn't hear that. He knows his position's in danger, or at least that people want it to be. Whether or not the front office is considering taking steps to replace Vermees is unknown, but what we do know is that that tension is slowly building. In my opinion, I think it's fair for any supporters to speak their mind, and in this case, it's 100% acceptable to be upset with what is going on in Kansas City. To be a supporter means to invest into a club. Time, energy, money, whatever it is, if you're supporting a club, you want what's best, and there are a million different scenarios people may think is best. Now, I'm not an SKC supporter, so take this however you wish, but after 15 seasons of the same head coach, I think it could be time for a change in Kansas City. I think it's possible to fully respect what Peter Vermees has done with the club, but to also have the right to see what could be the next step. As the longest tenured coach in MLS by a mile and one of the longest tenured coaches in world football, I think Vermees should be willing to accept when it's time for something to come to an end. And for a guy who's poured so much of himself into this organization, I know he wants the best for the club. It's just about taking the right steps to get there. On the other hand though, there's reasons to keep him. The season is long and with such close competition every year, there's definitely still a chance he can straighten the ship and qualify for the playoffs. Success in Major League Soccer is on a thin line and with the right form and the right signings, you can catch back up. But do they have the time? I encourage you to keep an eye on the story in Kansas City and as they prepare for a tough run of fixtures ahead, I'm not quite sure when they will get that first victory. What do you think? Is it time to sack Peter Vermees or is it not? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and I'll see you next time.